three, two, one. Go. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to count down. And then that, that would have been like a, like a great wow. way. We okay. got to start over. Okay. Take two. Three, three, two, one. Action. Here we go. No, I didn't like <laughs> that one either. We're going to do it again. No. <laughs> Brianna, thank you so much for coming on. As I said before, we were just chatting and we're, and we, we're talking about music and I really like yours. So that's why you're on this podcast. And that's why okay. everybody's on this podcast because I like their music. Only the top tier. And it doesn't stop here for this episode either. And wow. I just, it's amazing. And uh, so this thank is a short one. I just want to say thank you for hopping on. And uh, we're, we're done here. We're, we're good. All we're, right. We're at that time. It was a pleasure. Nice okay. That. that was great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to start um, with this question. I usually, I usually start in the same vein, but I'm trying to switch it up this time. And what I, what I wanted to ask you is how often does personal or do personal experiences kind of make their way into the, into the songs that you write? Oh, wow. That's a good one to start off with. I, I mean, appreciate for- it. I always like that compliment. It happens sometimes and I, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. It is. And that's gonna be the only good one. I, I start with the good one and then it gets progressively worse and worse, but we'll, we'll, we'll see as time goes on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're getting it the nitty gritty right off the bat which i appreciate because i'm pretty i i don't i'm I, I assume with most musicians i don't know we're not really big surface talk people but uh for sometimes me, you gotta dig but then i mean and then it's there and they're like oh my gosh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i all my stuff is about personal stuff i i'm as i've gotten older i'm actually challenging myself to be like no oh, let's write a song about you know the grocery store or something like that but no for real I, I mean I started off playing guitar just as a exercise like to get all my thoughts and my my woes out and um, it became like a mental mental health moment for me when I would sit down with my guitar and sing so to be honest I would say like that was the question how much of it is personal yeah or yeah I mean almost all of it I would say like my first album I wrote um you know right well I wrote a little bit before my dad passed away and then a lot afterwards and then same with like heartaches you know coming up in my 20s you know that there was a lot a lot to pull from there and yeah anytime that I'm feeling something that's um something that I can't quite put into words or it's overwhelming or you know nothing like no tv show or radio show or anything like that is going to distract me enough that's usually time to go to the guitar and try and make something and you know 90 percent of it doesn't really see the light of day but uh, when it when it hits a chord and I, and I think oh that's some there's something there I don't know how to really gauge it but you just have this gut feeling that it's something that is special in a moment that you kind of want to sing back at or, or record it or something like that. Very nice. So yeah, all of it. I'm a crybaby, so <laughs> it's so all music, in the music is the path. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> do you um, do you write songs that are intended to be kind of open ended, or is I mean, it's it's based out of a, a specific experience, it seems like. But do you try to alter it or tailor it in a way that is can be interpreted by multiple people by diff- for, or as different things? Hmm. Yeah, I I don't know if I've I've thought that through as far as my personal songwriting. I think I'll I'll start with an idea or a phrase, and then from there. I'll, I'll kind of explore those feelings around it. And usually it's just kind of intuitive of when that's done. Um, I do like the idea of maybe f- kind of manifesting an ending, if that makes sense. Like, oh, I want to feel good. So I'm going to end this song on a high note or something like that. I think that could be powerful. But for the most part, it's it's very just intuitive of knowing like okay I think the song's done or the bridge can be about this or can kind of touch on these feelings toward the end but um yeah I don't think it's that formulaic of like me mapping out this is how I I want to end it it's kind of natural and organic how it goes I think 
<laughs> if I can, I'm like, wow, I guess I've never talked about this process that much. It's just sort of like this tornado that comes in and then all of a sudden the song's done. <laughs> It, it's so interesting getting into into the nitty gritty of it, and I and I, I like asking those questions. You're like, oh, I guess it, I guess it is like that. So that, that's what that's why I'm trying yeah. to elicit here. Yeah. And, um, like good I said question. before, I, th- I yeah. two for two. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, I'm about to ruin it. Favorite sandwich? What is? <laughs> uh, pesto. I like pesto. pesto. I mean, I, I do ask those questions because that's all. Those are also those elicit interesting answers as well. Yeah, yeah pesto. Yeah. Are you are you sandwich person in general? Are you like, let me get a. I don't think so. I think, I I like uh, I well I recently went gluten free, so it's kind of like oh you I, made the shift. Free bread, <laughs> I'm down. But I love <laughs> mozzarella, tomato, like pastas, all of that. So anything around there, I'm I'm loving. That's 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 your thing. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not a From sandwich person either. From to pesto sandwiches. You already hear. This is groundbreaking shit. I mean, have you have you ever <laughs> talked about that on a on an interview before? No, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Called making waves. <laughs> yeah. Um. Is there is there like some some bands or artists that you look towards um for inspiration while kind of trying to hash out an idea of a song or something like oh i'm gonna put on this record or listen to this person's whatever yeah um you know i'm actually a little weary of doing that specifically because i'm very impressionable and things can kind of have a effect on me and i'm i'm really yeah I'm not trying to I'm trying my best not to copy anything because I'm I'm already like on social media and all of this these things that just you know no matter what you're hearing it and it's kind of that that earworm but I will say um I do listen to music that makes me really happy and that makes me feel like close to to a truth inside myself like I've been getting really into like Afropop and psychedelia, which, you know, me as like this white girl from Minnesota, I'm, I'm not going to make Afropop music, but maybe there is, you know, some influences, especially like percussion wise, like going on tour with Witch was honestly the biggest inspiration that I've had in a long time, like seeing that band perform live every night. Um, there's, there's something really, really magical happening with their music. And I think that, uh, it's coming from a place of just genuine, um, I don't know, genuine experiences and they're singing about their experiences. So if I can feel inspired by that and tap into my own experiences, I think that that's, that's where I want to be. If I put on an artist that I like that maybe some people even like, I think I sound like or something like that, I think it can get too hairy, too close, you know, and I don't want to I don't want to be like anybody. I want to just be myself, you know, <laughs> Sound like an angsty teenager, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would put on something that makes me feel like genuine, like something that feels genuine, I think would be the answer to that. Yeah. And I recently, I mean, I've had this one guy on my playlist for a while, but most recently I've been like, man, what's his deal? Like, I want to know more about him, you know, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Fra- Francis Baby or Bebe, um, he's Cameroonian. And, and I think that he was kind of bigger in the seventies, but he did that sort of like rhythmic with the flutes and um, saying about, you know, my, my whole heart is love, like just these positive lyrics that really just, impact me when i listen to them i definitely recommend his stuff too awesome i'm i mean i'm gonna give you listen to that for sure because uh, yeah baby it's b-e-b-e-y i believe francis baby awesome yeah and you heard that here too i mean we're doing <laughs> groundbreaking shit here I think, where do you go from up i mean i don't know there's don't no know. you can't you can't <laughs> um where does your love for music stem from where does i mean like if you could pinpoint like maybe in the, uh, a moment or a, or, a, or a time in your life that you were really just exposed to it? Oh, let's see here. I mean, the first thing that popped into my head was growing up, um, I'm from Minnesota and I kind of split my time between Minnesota and, and I was basically, my mom and my father divorced. So I'd spend time 
Minnesota with my dad and, and our family out there. And then my mom was moving around a lot. And so I would go back and forth, but I had an older sister in Minnesota and she was, you know, I grew up, I'm, I'm 33 now. So I grew up in the nineties and she was really into um, R and B and hip hop. And, and I just have these memories of hearing these songs at party, you know, house parties she'd have at the house or like on the radio, MTV, all of these things. And I just remember being kind of drawn in from harmony and, and melody and, and stuff like Aaliyah and like and Mace and I don't know who else I'm trying to think. I also, we'd also listen to like Celine Dion and like just random pop mainstream R&B and pop stuff. Um, and I think growing up around that music was just such a introduction for for music because my mom was really young when she had me so I also didn't really grow up with like a lot of my friends are like growing up with the Beatles and they knew who Led Zeppelin was and I didn't really have that sort of um, 60s or 70s rock base so to be introduced to music first that from an R&B perspective or like you know a mainstream pop perspective and then later on find you know these other bands and get into psychedelia and rock and roll and all that stuff that was I think kind of like this mashup moment for me of like wait I had no idea you know a lot of these songs were borrowed from back in the day or you know finding out that Hank Williams Sr. was writing these love songs like way way back in the day and, and then people borrowed ideas from that and just like you know, discovering the history of music was, I guess you could call me like a late bloomer um, on that. And I'm still learning so much. But yeah, I think just growing up in Minnesota and like hearing what played on the radio on these R&B channels was like, I, I remember trying to sing along with it. I remember trying to dance to it. I remember just really enjoying it, seeing music videos and MTV. So I think that would be probably my first experience and like knowing that I really enjoyed listening to it and trying to sing along with it but I didn't know that I wanted to be a singer or, or play guitar or anything because I was just in one of those families where like none of us was really musical it was just I found that out way way later on that I wanted to try and play guitar you know I don't know if that answers your question. It but, sure yeah. does. I, I, you're second guessing these answers, but I'm along for the ride. I love it. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're I'm giving a, me what I'm, I'm searching a, for. Rambling stream here. It's good. Yeah. Cause there's not a distinct memory, but all these different yeah. experiences and then uh, just mashing together into, into what, in, into just inspiration. Well, yeah. Finding my own way <laughs> with music. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think, I mean, I do remember being in chorus in sixth grade. I think we had this thing. Awesome. Called yeah. So we got to try, I remember like try orchestra, try band, try chorus. And I did stick with chorus. So I think there was also like a moment where I'm like, oh, okay. I think I, I think I like this thing called singing. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. When, and this is going to be a, another hard hitting question here, but when, do you feel the most free when you're around music and, and trying to, and trying to make it? Mm, that's a really nice one. Um, it's not a good one. It's a nice one. That's it. No, that's to be a, clear. Yeah, used up the word good too much. So I had to switch it up. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful question. I mean, thank you. I think is definitely when I'm all alone and, in this right now I'm, I'm in my living room and I have my guitar and my microphone sometimes I won't even have the microphone set up and I'm just free to experiment and sing usually how my lyrics come is just like stream of consciousness so I'm just like you know doing a little thing on guitar and trying to make sense of whatever feelings are going on inside me and that's when it comes out and I think that's a moment of like you know, freedom or um, sort of epiphanies or 
any sort of like release where I feel free from being in the physical world, you know, there's that kind of float a little bit, you lose time. That's definitely, definitely that moment for me. And maybe too on stage, on stage singing the songs. It's hard to be in the floaty place the whole time on stage, but um, if you can get there, then it's a really, really good show. <laughs> does um does performing songs live elicit the same response as it does when you're sitting there and in, in writing them? Um. I wouldn't say same, but I would say similar worlds. Um, if you're alone and those lyrics are coming out the first time and that way that you're singing it comes out the first time, for me, it's a really sacred moment that, you know, that's actually the heart of it for, for myself. That There's no other highest moment for, for me as a musician because it's, like, yeah, I think you nailed it. It's like, there is that freedom that comes from this, like letting go of something. And then when on stage, which I'm, I'm still learning how to do, um, but to really be actually something uh, Jagari from which ta taught me is um, being inside the music and how important that is. And I, I'm, again, still kind of relearning it, especially after the pandemic and not performing as much. But I think if you are inside of it with your bandmates or, you know, if you're playing solo and you can be the, in that present moment, you know, delivering that sort of message that you originally wrote alone in your bedroom or wherever you wrote it. And then, then there is that moment of release as well. Like you've done your job almost but so much of that when you're performing live can get like washed or or misplaced because for me personally I think performing live is super challenging like you have a full audience and as fun as it can be and you it should be like a reciprocal loop you know they're feeding you energy and you're giving it back I think that it can kind of get stuck sometimes. Whereas me, if I'm alone in my bedroom singing, there's no, no other distractions and I can kind of like float. But the goal is, which I'm sure many great live performers do, is being inside that music the whole time. And then you're just like riding that that floaty wave. Yeah, it's always, like, songs are always this, or I mean, any ideas really, if you're writing something or, or whatever it is, it's always, um, the purest right when it's done right right when it's made is like that's the purest form of it and then and then even of course you could always like work on it and refine it and maybe it's better than it was in its initial idea or initial process but that that one like singular thing is like okay like like here it is like that's a great idea let me tackle that yeah yeah special. You... and i didn't know we're getting witch wisdom on here as well that's <laughs> awesome i love that dropping it <laughs> i'm fresh <laughs> off the tour so i'm still like huh glowing from their uh their amazing wisdom their spiritual bombs i would call them i caught you at but the yeah, right time I mean, yeah. have, have you heard of uh demoitis no oh that's to me that's such a thing like you had you made the demo and like there's something magical happening on it and then you're just trying to recreate it recreate it just never never works but it turns into something else like you're saying so you know it's all it's all big old fun process art <laughs> fun stressful all of it yeah we'll make you cry we'll make it's a you Venn diagram yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you do you view songs off of your older albums in a different light than you did when you originally wrote them oh yeah yeah i i usually remember for most of them, not all of them, where I was when I wrote it um, or where I was when I started writing it. And as I've gotten older, I, again, I think my music is just such a personal thing that I can, I can see how I've grown from certain situations or see how, uh, 
Yeah, yes and no, because at the same time, I can sing those songs and go right into that same place. So um, I do see, I have perspective on them, but I can also drop in really easily and be like, yep, that was 18 year old me, like depressed, figuring it out. <laughs> I'm st- still still inside me somewhere. I'm, I'm doing better now, but. <laughs> Great. And I'm glad to hear it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um, and speaking of songs that you've written, how did your songs end up on Sex Life on Netflix? Oh yeah. How did that come about? That's awesome. You watch that show? I I've always seen it, <laughs> but I haven't. I I, I always see it on little okay. um cue thing. I've not watched it. I'll be honest so, here. I have not that? watched it yet. <laughs> you know, no no offense. Thing. I have an awesome uh sync licensing person named carter he's he's rad um shout out to carter shout out carter um yeah and and he pitches my music and to my surprise the three songs got on there i mean three three different uh, that's insane yeah the one some funny little tidbit um information is that those three songs were actually b-sides of my new album And I had planned to put them on an EP after the album came, the new album comes out. Um, But then this all came along and I was like, oh shit, I guess I got to release these first and now. Um, So I hustled and I made some videos for them and released them as singles. And, and then they came out on the show that way people could like Shazam them. And and if they liked it and could, you know, maybe come to a show or something like that, but (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of how that all came about. And looking back, it's just funny how the universe is like, oh, no, these songs got to come out. Like your plan is not the plan that's going to happen. And No, sorry. Yeah. So, Would yeah. you want it was... to happen? No way. But this other thing that's great, it's going to happen. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Exactly. Three different ones. Three. Are you fucking the Rolling Stones? Like what? <laughs> Insane. Good I on you. They're making a little bit more money than me, but... <laughs> what's up netflix i mean come on let's uh let's come chat on. here <laughs> yeah no, until that soundtrack comes out and then they're gonna put on vinyl oh that skyrocket cool. then you're gonna be too good for this show and you're gonna be like ah, no i'm not going yeah. back on fuck that yeah, yeah. i'm a multi multi multi-millionaire now i'm hanging out with no. bezos you think i'm gonna come on the vineyard i don't think so no <laughs> i will always come back on the vineyard i'm never too big for vineyard <laughs> no people, people mark have- my word we there have is. this is this is recorded you understand that right like you yeah. understand that i could just refer back to this yeah. that's right i'm putting it down on put my what is the saying we'll put the, on the record money where the <laughs> put your money where your mouth is is that it it's the opposite i'm yes. just like switch things around a lot no i knew you had it though because i saw your tongue i saw it was on the tip but, of it mm, i literally saw it and i was like yeah she's got it i know i, I know it, you I got it. it very cool though very cool um opportunity there yeah that was awesome Uh, and that was kind of like right around the pandemic too so it kind of gave me a little bit of you know pep in my step trying to get these songs out some people to hear it because you know the indie artists it's it's tough out here trying to get that rent paid yeah (laughs) very very cool but uh action bronson also had you on one of one of his things not fuck that's delicious but i think it was the untitled right yeah entitled which i don't think is a show anymore have you no. noticed that yeah i don't think that i mean no viceland is still there but they don't they used to show fuck that's delicious constantly yeah. on there i, I still have cable so i'm on the up and up about what's on viceland and what's not on viceland i love vice <laughs> a lot of a lot of stuff on there is really cool that pharmacopoeia shows i love that show. oh yeah yeah that guy's interesting hamilton hamilton morris, morris i want to say this is yeah i love I I love that show. I I think I think there needs to be more shows about educational drugs. <laughs> yeah. So smart. Oh my god. I can't say half the things he says on those shows. <laughs> no. Um but yeah. Not us. Can... That's not our repertoire though. It's fine. We know our lanes. It's not we're not we're not yeah. drug lecturers. We which all is have fine. A kid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but no the action thing was cool that was shot right in in brooklyn i forget the name of that place Uh, oh oh and and at the vice studios that's what 
in Williamsburg where the death by audio used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they, do they, are they at that, at that spot now? Cause I've, I've only heard about that spot. I, I've never, I've never been there, but I, I have heard of the death. By audio. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know there was a lot of controversy too about vice kind of kicking them out. Um, or no, was it Glasslands? I think I'm, no, it was death by audio. Yeah. But yeah, I, the, the, it's the, we went to go record that the first day and then something happened and they had to like cancel production. I, I don't know what happened, but we were kind of nervous. We're like, oh man, like, I don't know if they're going to reschedule us. You know, everyone's schedules is so crazy, but then we ended up being able to come back, I think the next day or the next couple of days. And it was great. We got to eat really good food and drink wine. And that was a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so funny to like, we don't, we actually don't have any food for you. I'm so sorry, yeah. but you know, but like the help you, you guys don't get, don't get to eat. <laughs> Please bring your own sandwich. Cause we know that you're a sandwich <laughs> person. Please bring that in because action is, is too yeah. busy. <laughs> yeah. Way too busy. He's like a nice guy. Was he a nice guy? Did you get to chat with him? Yeah. He's, he was awesome. He was like, you know, everyone was getting super stoned and no, no. Oh, yeah. what? Ashley yeah, Bronson? Mean, you, no. You see the oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got me for a second. I was like, what? You don't know about no, this? no. I thought he was he's uh, a <laughs> notoriously straight edge guy. I yeah, guess, yeah, yeah. No, it was really cool, and it, it, all the people there were super nice. Like went above and beyond to like make sure everyone was having a good time. So. Well, and I, I've seen him since then. I ran into him um, at that really great, uh, what's the place in Williamsburg with like the big flat noodles? It's like Shane, um, it's like Chinese noodles. Mm, it's so good. I'm blanking the name, but he was there getting some good food. And I was they're like, they're a sponsor of this podcast. So <laughs> the big noodle place, Williamsburg, right? Williamsburg, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Shout out to them. Shout out. They, I mean, they have some dang ass noodles. I'm a big noodle girl, so you're, you you're, go back to food again. I was gonna want. say, I mean, is, is, are is noodles above the sandwiches? Just overall, I say, yeah. I mean, pasta, which is like heartbreaking. That I'm gluten free now, but there's some all right gluten free noodles. I mean, nothing will ever be the same. But sure, yeah, a we rice noodle. Gluten. You know, got to get rid of the gluten. It's making me tired. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't like how you're, you're convincing me of going gluten free. I don't like that. No, it's working. Hey, it's it. not for everyone. Everyone has their own DNA and their I'm own. I'm going to tell you this. It's not for me. I'm just saying it now. There you and, go. Yeah. And it's not like I'm that, I, sometimes I will have gluten. I don't like, you know, I'm not celiac, but. Oh, so you're not me. about it. You're not really about, okay. Yeah. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a fake gluten free person. I'm a fake gluten free girl. Yeah. I'm a poser. <laughs> Whack. Um, <laughs> love how much we're talking about my diet on this podcast <laughs> it's, it's it's really a diet show just like just uh it's disguised as a yeah. oh let's talk about your music no let's talk yeah. about let's talk about like how much sugar are you <laughs> daily oh, daily started on the sugar <laughs> being in new york i want to know have you had any celebrity run-ins or seen anybody like oh that's like in such and such right there or oh. so and so let me think here man i don't know actually i'm I'm sure i have but none are coming to mind right now i the the latest celebrity i saw that was at the witch show it was um benicio del toro was there at the la show but that was la i'm trying to think very cool yeah that's i mean that's a celebrity yeah, I met uh, Michael Shannon once. Um, I'm a big fan of his. He was. I used to work at Le Poisson Rouge, that music venue, LPR, and he would come in sometimes. And I'm sure there's been a few. I but bet there's a couple that aren't. I'm sure I'm missing, but yeah. Benicio del Toro. I mean, we're in loving Las Vegas. It's fucking great. I know. Like, was- Pretty cool. Awesome. He's a fan of which, I guess. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't be, but. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth there. Yeah. Yeah. And Action Bronson. I, 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 I heard okay. that you, you've also met him before, but yes. I, don't, I don't know. That's just hearsay. Is that true? Is it, is it true that you actually it's met him? All, yeah. It's all a lie. 
it's it, it's all a farce um we yeah. i mean we we touched on this earlier about like being kind of reciprocal with the uh, being in the band and then like bringing out energy out, out of the crowd and it, it's kind of a, a back and forth but aside from that what makes a good performance or what makes a performance good mm. aside from that um i think having fun and that's something i'm relearning too um I can, some of my music can get pretty serious or, you know, there's a moments that I'm like going inside of myself. And I think that when you're on stage, it's all about having fun with the people that you're playing and not fake fun, like genuine fun. Cause <laughs> I, I think there's, a, you know, you can kind of crisscross into those, the, the, both of those areas. There's a difference there they're in their shore. Is, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i think just have fun like you're you're on stage playing music with hopefully your friends i mean it doesn't really get much better than that unless you're in like fleetwood mac but besides that like (laughs) funny you say that because our last tour um was two couples it was one i basically my guitar my usual guitarist couldn't make the tour um and so I was kind of scrambling to find someone to play lead guitar on this tour. And Juan uh, volunteered himself to do it. He doesn't normally play in my band. Future guests and, of the podcast, we're hoping. We're, we're, yeah. we're just discussing that oh, I, on you, I, Juan. No. It's, it's happening. I, I can already let you know that. <laughs> Boom. Um, and then my keyboard player is married to my bassist so we had two couples in the band and then my drummer so it was funny we're like oh it's like leave a max style but i won't normally tour with juan it was just kind of a last minute thing it's good you guys yeah talented musicians yeah Yeah. it was so fun i mean touring again after everything that ever you know we've all been through was just like such a gift right yeah yeah, how did how did that first kind of show feel like coming back into it? Like, wow, like this is what it was, or were you bummed out sick. faking that faking that fun like you were saying before that you notoriously do? Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean it was it was really. I think I'll probably remember that show for the rest of my life. To be honest, not to be dramatic, but I think it was just such a moment for me personally you know like after the pandemic and as a as a musician I don't know if many other people go through this but I go through doubts about you know the trajectory of my life and like having to make a living and also wanting to play music and it doesn't always you know doesn't always add up and 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 especially after the pandemic it was just like a confusing time I think for a lot of musicians and once and also planning the tour was really stressful you know it's like hemorrhaging money just to like get the van rental the back line the the practices lined up while while you're trying to work and save money for the tour and um I'm like my own manager my own tour manager trying to be a good friend a good bandmate all these things so you're juggling all these things you're like I don't know if all this stress is worth it and then like you get on stage that first night and it's just like wow And there was just this this added extra something that I can't even really put into words because, you know, I think our first beach or our first show was in Solana Beach at that place called the Belly Up. Mm. Is that what it's called? Belly Up Tavern, yeah. Wow. They, all the staff there was super sweet and um, they were saying that that was kind of like one of their first bigger shows with everyone not having to wear masks and everything. So it was just the energy was heightened I think on top of it being just like a really special show um and then it all just became worth it more than worth it it's just like ah I can't wait to do it again like let's go let's plan the next one Where, where's the next tour? let's go <laughs> yeah it must it, it must have been like a great reawakening yeah like, oh I missed this I didn't know I missed this as much though yes yes that's a great great word to describe it thank you i try i, I look at a yeah. source before we jumped on here just like ah, I what, love can, it. what can i throw I'm, in there the words magic magical magical 
esoteric. I don't even know what that one means, but it sounds it sounds nice. Yeah, that that works. It feels right. Does it work? I don't know. I mean, it feels right, but I don't think it's a synonym <laughs> to what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> before uh, music, though, you, uh, you wanted to to act. You you had like a, yeah. a passion for acting, though. Yeah. How'd you know that? <laughs> I was like, I forget, is that out there in the internet world? Oh. I'm friends with Nard War. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. Oh, cool. We have a common court. No. Um, no, we... no, you said it. You said it before on um, I can't remember another the, guy, the guy's podcast. It's it's pretty good though. I will I'll tell you. Um oh my Michael friend Jordan. J- Jordan. Jordan, Jordan. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I did that podcast so long ago, I forgot about that one. Um I yeah, didn't. I, I just listened to it. I was, I was, I was getting that feeling. I was like, man, she is just so rude. And then <laughs> <laughs> she's such a bitch. <laughs> no, no, the, you guys had a great report. It seemed like you, you guys were actually friends, and you, and you guys, yeah. you guys had like a deep, you know, um, we're, we're like still friends. I just saw him like, together last yeah. week. Yeah. Well, so he. You tell works. him that he did. He did a great interview, and he's a I real will. estate guy, right? Is is he yeah, still in real yeah. estate? Oh, okay. Yep, still in real estate, and he he actually left the company that I worked at for a long time, and now he's back. Oh, okay, all right. So we were we were just like chatting about everything last week, but yeah, I I moved to New York. I mean, I studied theater in Florida. I wanted to be an actress, um, and you know, I saw my first play when I was like. 18 years old so again I did not grow up with arts or like music or anything like that so discovering it all at when I was 18 and kind of diving into certain worlds um it was just yeah just really exciting and so I went to theater school was acted in some plays and then I moved around a little bit after my dad passed away and, and then I wound up in Vermont and that's when I felt like pretty lost and I wrote a lot of songs there but all the while I was just like writing songs on my guitar and not really having an idea of what to do with them but I was like no I still really want to do the acting thing so I auditioned for Circle in the Square Theater School which is a conservatory here in New York City and I got in and then I went that year kind of changed my life like I think acting school is so much about identity and like figuring out who you are in order to like tap into certain emotions of the human experience and and therefore you know play them on stage or in film and so I learned a lot about myself in that year and and I did some auditions and and things like that but I just found myself I kept kind of coming back to the guitar 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 and then that's when I recorded some demos and sent them to the producer but I still have such a love for acting and I I really hope to like continue to do it it's just with any art I think you have to throw your entire being at it in order to like if you want to make it your career so for me music kind of chose me and vice versa and if acting can kind of be there on the side sometimes that would be great you know and with music videos too it's fun to kind of like crisscross into those worlds and like combine them yeah it's kind of it's kind of blends into one another at that point do you feel yeah. like there was a certain time that you were, like you said, like kind of throwing everything into it, like you did, you like you currently are with music? Was there a point you're like, I'm throwing everything into acting at this moment? Yeah, I was. I was really trying. I think right after I had left, I had done one year at the conservatory and decided I wasn't going to do another year just because the way I saw it was like, I mean schooling is great but so much of it is about auditioning 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 and like you know you're gonna get told no 90 percent of the time um so I was like let me just try auditioning and and a lot of it too is like acting I have so much respect for actors because it, it you have to rely on so many different people in order to make your art like yes you nowadays you can you can just film yourself and do your youtube you know shorts or whatever but for me, I wanted to act in film and I wanted to be on in theater. And for that, you have to have these so many things line up. Like I was getting auditions for stuff that like I wasn't really into, you know, and I was like, no, I want to work with like Inaratu or, you know, these these big directors that you don't just get to do that. You have to. So, 
Yeah. I mean, to answer your question, I, I think I was working pretty hard at it, but you know, you, you can only go so far without an agent, without knowing people. Um, and just the luck of the draw, like my, my friend that I went to acting school with, he's, I know he's been hustling for a long time and now he's, he's finally getting some really cool things, you know, HBO show here and a little stuff over there. And it all depends too what you want out of it as well. Cause you can have a great life as an actor doing community theater. And if that is like fulfilling your, your purpose, then it's a great day's work, you know? Yeah. I think I had to do work with these certain scripts that were just so few and far between that hopefully I'll still get to do, but just will come when they come, you know, <laughs> or I'll make my own for a music video. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, and, and going back to this um, kind of overlapping within making a music video, do you feel like your songs being chosen for sex lives is kind of an overlapping as well as like, oh, that's so awesome that this is being blended again in a, in a new form? Yeah, I think that's a really good point is I have always been obsessed with with film and and certain television series and acting. So I consume a lot, like probably more than your average person. I, I have so many favorite shows and so many favorite movies that um, maybe there's something happening inside me where like I'm I am taking that in and for whatever reason, I'm writing songs that maybe are cinematic feeling. I don't know. Or, you know, I've been told that some of my songs have that, that emotive thing where it's, it makes you feel something which is really helpful in certain scenes um, with, with shows and with movies, but that could, yeah, I think that, that might, there might be something there with that. <laughs> it's a theory it's it doesn't have yeah. I mean, tremendous legs but there's something there <laughs> if it if it hadn't been music though it would have been acting like just no no even thought about that right i, I mean so. no, no i mean no second thought about that rather i mean there is a little bit of thought but no second thought about it yeah i think so i mean i have a great love for it and like two of my best friends are, are directors. And I just got back from Texas. Actually, my best friend was shooting her, her um, first short film that she's trying to make into a feature. And she, um, it's based off her, her dad's death story. And like, we both lost her fathers around the same time. And, and she cast Juan as one of the roles. And so we got to go down there and I was like, he had never done any acting or anything like that. And I was kind of like coaching him from my perspective on what to do. And it's like, it's insane how much technique it really does take. Like it's so much um, harder than it looks, you know? And so I was kind of revisiting like, oh yeah, this is something that I actually have spent many years doing and there's an art form to it. Obviously I'm not a professional at all, but it would be such a waste to like throw all that away. Like, and I really enjoy doing it. So hopefully there'll be more opportunities in the future, but I think it's all about, um, same with writing music. It's about getting to a core of getting to the core of yourself and being truthful of what you're feeling in the moment and then you know being able to play those emotions honestly because if it's if it's fake you can be like nah same with music you're like eh, I'm not feeling it or with acting you're like eh, no not for me but when someone's really having a truthful moment that's when the audience is able to identify with it and and kind of feel less alone which makes that's my favorite part about art is when I can have that communion and be like whoa that was inspiring then I go off and make my own stuff yeah and you can't fake fun again don't fake it don't even try don't if you fake try. fun don't don't come to Brianna's concert <laughs> yeah, hey I'm not perfect. That. I definitely have probably faked fun myself hold sometimes. on buy a ticket but don't attend let me just say that because we need we, we need those ticket prices okay yeah, we're, yeah, we're selling please. out now <laughs> <laughs> do you i mean do, do you look at 
I mean, there's obviously something that is hand goes hand in hand with, with performing in any sense, but is there a, a clear link between acting and performing live? I mean, I, 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 a song live and performing, obviously just like a play or even on camera. Is there, is there a clear, clear connection between those two for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the connection is, again, being as present as possible. Um, like that's so much easier said than done. And especially in the way that we live now, it's so hard to be present with the screens and the social media. Um, yeah, and really ask yourself why you're, why you're doing what you're doing, why you're making the choice you are in a role on film or why you are performing a certain move like are you moving your body because you think that's what looks cool or are you moving your body because you really feel it in the music and same with acting it's like are you look are you acting sad you know or or are you like connecting to a moment in the character that is that you know how that's felt before to me that those are my measures and those are what I try and connect to with art um but you know some may be like you're taking it too seriously <laughs> your method that's what you are you're just method it's fine Daniel yeah. Lewis does it you can do it too okay I, I'm just trying to be honest wh whether on stage or off you know I'm trying to be real because there's so much out there that I don't really I'm not into because I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not, I want to feel the, the, the stuff. I want to, I want the authentic experience from you and me, you know? Yeah. A, re a reciprocation of the same feeling. Yeah. Right? My standards are maybe a little too high, but. <laughs> it's fine. It's all right. Everyone, you got, you got to have a clear, a, a, a clear, like this is, this is where I stand on this point. Yeah. 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 Sandwiches, whatever. I mean, Asha Bronson, these things. Yeah, it's got it by audio. Feel. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, Fuzz Fuzz Club Records. Yeah. That's that that was that's that that's the new one, right? That's I I didn't want to yes. fuck that up. Yes. Awesome. Where they're putting out the new record and Ooh, awesome. when is do we have a date or like a kind of a we have a rough timeline. Um, fingers crossed, it will be out by the end of this year. Woo! All right, yeah. coming up. Awesome. And yeah, where where is the best place for people to, to go support you? Is is it through the Bandcamp or? Yep, Bandcamp. Um, to hear about shows and all that stuff, I'm pretty active on Instagram. But if you want records or music, Bandcamp for sure. Brianna Barbara .bandcamp .com. That's the best place. That's a link. Go support it very cool stuff up there yeah and and it's, it's also is is there any underscores in the instagram like where, where is the where's the best place uh no actually i think it's just my name brianna barbara oh you just got it oh that's that yeah <laughs> must be fucking nice all right cool i mean I, I i think it's a sign that i've been using instagram for far too long <laughs> <laughs> and sex life on netflix because i know yeah. i will i will be getting into it and i'm gonna be Oh, get ready. It's pretty steamy. Woo! Okay. Well, I gotta <laughs> wait for my parents' sleep and then and then yeah. I'll turn it on. Yeah. Definitely and, and... rated R. <laughs> Good. Oh, thank you, Jacob. This steamy. is a pleasure. Yeah. Are we are we missing anything though, by the way? Are you, we get tour coming up maybe soon? Um no, no, we just got back from tour, but there'll be hopefully some coming up soon. Oh, you don't so live on the road? Okay. Right. Uh, that's the goal that's i don't think we can put this goal. one out yeah i can't we can't put this one out um i thought i, th I thought you're about it but kind of like uh, the gluten thing kind of i'm working I'm toward it okay we're, no, we're um, well on our way babies it was it was it was fantastic talking to you brianna and is there is there anything else that we gotta we gotta promote before we um i don't think so. just stay tuned for that new music because we've been working hard on it for a long time and i can't wait to get it out on sex life season two it's coming at you possibly that would be awesome <laughs> i'm saying it now i'm calling yeah it. thank it you in so the... much Brianna. no thank no no you. I, 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 you were gonna say something cool and I, and I cut you off there oh i don't know i, I we're putting it out there that's all i said it's less cool but... we're manifesting it <laughs>
Thank you so much, man. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stop recording this. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay. <laughs>